Make we talk, people. Make we talk. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Make We Talk program here on WZBP and WZOP, the voice of the Caribbean. It's a beautiful, beautiful Monday afternoon here in South Florida. A bit bleaky, but okay so far. We must say condolence to the passing of America's is it 39th First Lady, Miss Rosalind Carter. Mistress Rosalind Carter, rather, the wife of uh, Jimmy Carter. Condolence to their family. But today we're going to speak about what is going on in the Parliament of Jamaica. This is WCPP and WZOP. The number to, to call in, it's an open mic day today. The number to call in is 850-446-0562. That's 850-446-0562. 4460562. That's the numbers to call in this afternoon on the Mecque Talk program as we're going to speak about what is going on in the Parliament of the Land of Wood and Water. Um, there are so many things going on where the Attorney General gave an advice to the current Speaker of the House, and it seems as if some shibangaran going on where the Speaker is saying that she is not obligated to tell the house what the advice of the attorney general of course the question was asked in the parliament was done so before the former speaker marissa dal Philibert left the parliament when she resigned her deputy who is the current speaker mrs juliet holness the wife of the Prime Minister of Jamaica. She is now the Speaker. And whatever advice that was given to either her, which of the has to be her, by the Attorney General of Jamaica, the opposition was the one who asked the question in the tabling of the Integrity Commission. And right now, it seems as if Madam Speaker doesn't want to tell the Parliament of Jamaica nor the nation of Jamaica what the, 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 the Attorney General tell her to do. And it cannot be, it cannot be that the Attorney General who is the lawyer for the government who is paid by the taxpayers of this country have some in other words he was deliberating or given an answer in the tabling of the integrity commission and it cannot be that the speaker of the house is telling the people of jamaica and the parliament of jamaica that she will not, she will not tell the nation or the, the parliament what the attorney general told her. But I have an audio clip in here where the opposition leader, Mark Golden, and of course the opposition was the one who asked the question. And and I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not a member of any political party, you know. I'm, I'm I'm just a Jamaican. And please don't dub me as a member of the PNP or the JLP. Because I'm not. You know? And based on what we have here, of what Mr. Mark Golden, opposition leader, said in the Parliament of Jamaica, that we need to hear this because Mr. Golden is saying that it cannot be that the Attorney General advised the current Speaker what to do and she cannot come and tell the Parliament then something is fundamentally wrong somewhere. Let us listen to what the Leader of Opposition said. Speaker seeks an opinion from the Attorney 
when a speaker seeks an opinion from the Attorney General, the speaker does so as the umpire of parliament in the capacity as speaker of this house. And, 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 the, and the context in which that opinion was sought was a matter that had been raised and was of some contention as to how these reports would be treated when they come to parliament. It is in that context that the, that the opinion was sought from the Attorney General. Having received that opinion, the right and transparent thing to do would be to share it with the members of Parliament, the members of Parliament. Everyone here on both sides, whether your government or opposition is neither here nor there, it is an opinion that was rendered on an important procedural matter affecting the governance of this country and its Parliament. And we have a right as members of Parliament to know the contents of that opinion and whether or not the reasoning is sound as to how the change has been implemented, as to how these reports are, be tre are to be treated with. And in response to Minister, acting member of, acting leader, House leader for today, I would also make the point that you have not made a ruling on the issue as to whether or not the Attorney General's opinion should be shared with us. You did not rule on that matter. We have been requesting it over time. You have been indicating that it wasn't ready or you were still reviewing it. And that is why our leader of opposition business today raised it again to say, can we see it? Because we would like to see it. My understanding is that it actually says that the prior convention was sound in law. There was nothing in the law that made it wrong for those reports to be tabled as soon as they come to Parliament. And if that is the case, why are we departing from a sound convention that is in the interest of good governance and transparency? And why would, want, why would anyone want to hide the advice that the Speaker is relying on in making a ruling that affects all of us in here? It is not good policy. It is not good governance. And I ask you, Madam Speaker, as the umpire of proceedings in this House, to consider the matter in that light and to share the opinion with us and also to consider whether we should not go back to the convention that has served this country well. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to figure out something here. Is the Parliament of Jamaica being run as a parliament or is it being run as a house? An individual house. If the highest attorney in the land, the attorney general, advise the speaker what to do in tabling the integrity commission report, and the question was asked in the parliament by the opposition, or in the matter of fact, or anybody, it is the sole duty, but I'm getting to understand, it is the sole duty of the speaker to come and tell the parliament what the attorney general of jamaica said so how is it that madam speaker refused to tell the nation what the attorney general said we're faced with a fundamental problem in this country you know and if anybody want to speak to me more about this or right? enlighten me some more about the laws of the land when it concerns the attorney general and the speaker of the house please do so you can call 850-446-0562 850-446-0562 because something is fundamentally wrong somewhere why is it that madam speaker refused to table the Integrity Commission report of the illicit six. The illicit six. The six parliamentarians who is alleged to gain enrichment. It is alleged. Nobody name no call. I mean, I call nobody name. We need to know. If the Attorney General tell Madam Speaker that she need to table or to table the IG report in the Parliament of Jamaica, the People's Parliament, the Parliament is not owned by any parliamentarians. 
It is the people of Jamaica's parliament, Henry Morgan House. Why is it that Madam Speaker refuse? You see? Refuse to tell the parliament what the Attorney General advised her to do. The Chief Prosecutor for the Parliament and for Jamaica. What the advice of it? Something is wrong somewhere. And we need to know what is going on? This afternoon, before coming on this program, I said to myself, where is Jamaica going? A lot of people may say every day I come and I bash Jamaica. I'm not bashing my country. I am talking about the level of corruption, the level of cronyism, the level of nepotism that is going on in the country. The level of corruption and the level of nepotism. The level of cronyism. Stinker than Riverton Dump. And we can hear nothing about what is going on. All we have to do because it seems as if those people who are in the effluence of the society of Jamaica are, are don't want to speak to us because what? You don't have to come on air and tell the nation and the world what is going on. And when we come on the air and speak about these things, you're being told that you're, you're, you're spreading propaganda and it's fake news and you're being paid 10,000 US to spread propaganda. Well, I don't get no money to spread no, I'm not spreading no propaganda. This is the facts. Go and consult the Jamaica Gleaner, the Observer. Go and consult the Observer of the Jamaica Gleaner. The opposition leader, as a matter of fact, it was the, the leader of the, the spokesperson on finance in the opposition. Ask the former Speaker of the House of Representatives, Mauricia Dal Philibert. Uh, that's her name? Yeah, I hope so. Because she said she can't table it. She has to seek advised from the Attorney General of Jamaica. Okay? When Mr. Julian Robinson, spokesperson on finance, asks the question, why is that being tabled? Why is that the, the IG, the um, Integrity Commission report, IG, RIC, was not being tabled? What is going on? She said, due to the, the sensitivity of the report, she has to speak to the Attorney General. Then if she has to speak to the Attorney General of Jamaica, it happened as that Mrs. Dalrymple, Mrs. Dalrymple Philibert had was to resign. So that leave up to the Deputy Speaker, who is now the Speaker, Mrs. Juliet Holness, to sit down with the Attorney General of Jamaica to speak about the Integrity Commission report. Apparently they did so. And now Madam Speaker refused to tell the people of this country what the Attorney General said pertaining to the report, the report, by the way, 
the Integrity Commission is paid by the taxpayers of this country, of Jamaica. So we, we have a sole duty and a right to know what the Attorney General said about the tabling of the Integrity Commission report. If I'm chatting nonsense, somebody call me and tell me to shut up. Because this is how you go. It is the sole duty of the Speaker of the House of Representatives, the People's House, not Mark Golden House, or Andrew Holness House, or Madam Speaker House, or Deputy Mr. Speaker House. Our opposition leader of go our opposition leader of business. Our government leader of business. It is the people of Jamaica House. And in case I forget, because when they return position of the Vumbava and the Vumbavi, you know, they forget who put them there. The people of Jamaica put them there. The people of Jamaica put you all there. Whether you live outside of Jamaica, or you live inside of Jamaica. Because when you don't want money, you don't run to the diaspora, for campaign, whatever. I want to get the money. So the people of this country, the people of Jamaica put you all there. And you, Madam Speaker, Mrs. Juliet Holness, you have a sole duty and a right to tell the people of Jamaica what the what advice you got from the Attorney General of Jamaica. What kind of shibanga run going on in the country? And on the same one talking that you know begging the Jamaican people for a third term? Third term where? It cannot be. In which, in, in which other modern democracy can this nonsense continue to happen? Where you have a Speaker of the House of Representatives refusing. Did, but, but the question must be asked though. Did the Attorney General advise her not to tell the people, not to tell the Parliament of Jamaica? I think not. I think not. I think not. Let us play back what the opposition leader said. Because until now, you know, I'm, I'm trying to find what Mrs. Holness said. And also, the acting leader of government business for that day was the Minister of Justice Delroy Chuck, and he got so high rated, you know. Whatever the speaker he rules, it is ruled. He was a, he was a brown man, you know. When he's when he speaking, get red and red around. There's such a word. But this, the opposition leader said in the Parliament of Jamaica, and this is what the opposition leader said to the, to the entire parliament and, and to the entire Jamaica. And the, I don't understand what is going on. I really don't understand what is going on. When a speaker seeks an opinion from the attorney general, the speaker does so as the umpire of parliament in the capacity as speaker of this house. And... and <coughs> And the context in which that opinion was sought was a matter that had been raised and was of some contention as to how these reports would be treated when they come to Parliament. It is in that context that the, that the opinion was sought from the Attorney General. Having received that opinion, the right and transparent thing to do would be to share it with the members of Parliament, the members of Parliament, everyone here on both sides, whether your government or opposition is neither here nor there. It is an opinion that was rendered on an important procedural matter, 
affecting the governance of this country and its parliament. And we have a right as members of parliament to know the contents of that opinion and whether or not the reasoning is sound as to how the change has been implemented, as to how these reports are, be tre are to be treated with. And in response to minister, acting member of, acting leader, house leader for today, I would also make the point that you have not made a ruling on the issue as to whether or not the Attorney General's opinion should be shared with us. You did not rule on that matter. We have been requesting it over time. You have been indicating that it wasn't ready or you were still reviewing it. And that is why our leader of opposition is today raised it again to say, can we see it? Because we would like to see it. My understanding is that it actually says that the prior convention was sound in law. There was nothing in the law that made it wrong for those reports to be tabled as soon as they come to Parliament. And if that is the case, why are we departing from a sound convention that is in the interest of good governance and transparency? And why would, want, why would anyone want to hide the advice that the Speaker is relying on in making a ruling that affects all of us in here? It is not good policy. It is not good governance. And I ask you, Madam Speaker, as the umpire proceedings in this House, to consider the matter in that light and to share the opinion with us and also to consider whether we should not go back to the convention that has served this country well. You hear? Those are the words of opposition leader Mark Golden. For good governance, why is it? Is there something to be hide in the Integrity Commission report from the people of Jamaica? Why is it that the Speaker refused to table the report in the Parliament of Jamaica, the People's Parliament? The People's Parliament. Madam Speaker, the members of the Jamaican diaspora want to know why you refuse to table the Integrity Commission report? The members of the Jamaican diaspora, Madam Speaker, want to know why you haven't tabled the Integrity Commission report. Why you refuse to do it? Is it that the Attorney General tell you something that you know why here? In, in Auntie Juliet? Auntie Juliet? Is it that the Attorney General told, said something to you that you don't want to hear, Madam, Madam Speaker. But whether you don't want to hear it, yes, I know, in public life. And for far too long, the two political parties in our country have been hiding things from us. The People's National Party is no different. In the 1990s, they hide a lot of things from us from, with, with, with the FinSAC group under the leadership of the former prime minister. But it's not, not, we're not talking about that now. We're talking about what's going on now. And the time has come for the people of our country and the people of the diaspora to send a clear and decisive message to the government of Jamaica that we will not stand for the nepotism and cronyism and corruption that is going on in the country. Let me repeat myself. The time has come for members of the Jamaican diaspora to send a clear and present message to the government of Jamaica. You have so much organization up here. You have organization name. I can't behave myself this evening. Organization name. The Crime Prevention Task Force. Conan Pong from them, them dead. You have other task force in this country, in the Jamaican diaspora, both in Canada, United States, and England. And you hear nothing about them. But when these people from Jamaica come up here to look money, the hug them up and glut. Oh, Madam Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. PM and Madam PM. And our kind of PM. 
But you do not tell them, say, look here, one of them go on with dung, they don't look good. You all know, say to them, what is going on in the country? Don't the crime situation in Jamaica is out of work. And yet they come up here. When they have the town hall meeting in the hands and gloves them up and kiss them. Mwah, 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 mwah. But you don't tell them what is going on. You don't say to them, say, look here. It's a beautiful country, but what is going on with is nonsense. You all don't say that to them. But yet, on the hands and gloves them. Well, the time has come for the diaspora in England, in Canada, and in America to stand up to the government of Jamaica and tell them enough is enough. Table the Integrity Commission report, Madam Speaker. Table the Integrity Commission report. It needs to be tabled. The people of Jamaica need to know who is under investigation? From who under no investigation? Which country this nonsense can continue happen more than in Jamaica? We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. You're listening to WZOP 92.7 LPFL. We're not the airline. That is the difference between them and us. A few will continue to plunder poor people's money because we will have to continue to live with the rampant corruption that has characterized this government of which the Prime Minister has been a part from beginning till now. We say it over and over again that young people are the future. But the way young people are being treated in this country at this time has to change. It must change. Time come, comrades, for young people to live good in this country. Comrades, we can look around us and we see the state of hopelessness that many of our young people are in. We see that many of them are choosing chopping over education. We see that many of them are being gunned down and are gunning down people. We see that many of them, they can't afford the school fee, so them just stay at home. We see that many of them are being choked by the high cost that they have to be paying back to SLB. And many of our young people in this country are feeling hopeless. Comrades, I'm here to tell you today that there is hope. There is hope and it resides within the People's National Party. The PNP has always stood with young people. We stood with young people when Manly gave them free education. We stood with young people when P.J. Patterson gave us path and modernized our trust. We stood with young people when Portia Simpson Miller gave us the Sports Development Foundation so young people can advance in sports. And comrades, so it was in the beginning, so it shall be in the end. Time come, comrades, and under 
Mr. Our Leader, Mark Jefferson Golding. We are ready. We are prepared. I got arrested a few times. During the 60s, I went to jail 40 times. Since I've been in Congress, I've been arrested another five times. And I'm probably going to get arrested again for something. I'm not suggesting that any of you should go out and get arrested. But when you see something that is not right, not fair, not just. And guests, and do not reflect the views or opinions of the Voice of the Caribbean, INI Radio, or its affiliate stations, platforms, or its staff and management. Welcome back to the Mecca Talk program here on WZPP and WZOP, the Voice of the Caribbean. The numbers to call into the program is uh, 850-446-0562. That's 850-446-0562. And we're talking about the tabling of the Integrity Commission. Why is it that they refuse to table it in the Parliament of Jamaica? I don't understand what is going on. I fail to answer what is going on. They are gearing up to call the election, you know. They are gearing up to call the local government election come Sunday, the 26th of November, at the National Arena, where the Prime Minister may put on his clerks, his green clerks, and he may call the local government election, may announce the date of the local government election, on Sunday. Are we going to sit down? They need to tell us if there are some laws or clause in the Parliament's standing order committee um, um, thing. Why is it that this current Speaker of the House refuse to tell the people or to tell the Parliament why she do not want to table the Integrity Commission report. You know, it is it, 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 it is it is quietly clear, it is quite clear that members of the governing side held Ben and silencing the Integrity Commission directors and other members of staff. They are held bent in doing that. From 1932 until now, we the people, we the favorite few, or we the, the, the few, don't have a say anymore. We're voting the people. And when we see them and we try to talk to them, they are so high up in society that they don't want to talk to us. Are we going to sit down? And every five years, they tell us some shibanga wrong. And we swap black dog for monkey. That's what, that, that, that's what we plan to do. It is quite clear that the Speaker of the House refused to tell the nation of Jamaica what the Attorney General said to her. The, she see the advice of Jamaica's chief lawyer, the Attorney General of Jamaica. You believe that if it was in the United States of America and the Senate seek the advice of the Attorney General of, 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 of um, America, of the United States, and he gave them the advice. And they're supposed to come back to the House of Representatives to tell, to advise the Republicans or whosoever. You think, you think they wouldn't do it? But no. We in Jamaica say, so no man, leave Madam Speaker alone. No man, leave her alone. But no, it should not be so. 
It should not be so at all. We have a soul duty and a soul and a right to know what the attorney general said to her. Why is it that she don't want to, why is it that she don't want to table the National Integrity um, Commission report? Why is it that the Andrew Holness administration, led by the Speaker of the House, refused to table the Integrity Commission report? Why? And yet they're gonna they, they, they plan to call election. In the sense, some other jurisdiction, you know. I am not suggesting anything. But in some other jurisdiction, you know what happened. We don't have the backbone of Nanny of the Maroon anymore. We don't have the backbone of Paul Bogle and Marcus Garvey anymore. See what they did the other day? Lied the Lagilar, a human rights activist, stand up in front of Jamaica House with a placard calling for the Prime Minister to tell us what is going on, calling for the removal of the Minister of National Security. You know what they do to him? Then lock him up and charge him. The American citizens can't go in front of the, in front of the White House and protest. But the Jamaican citizen can't. If a Jamaican file a lawsuit against a minister in, in Jamaica, the court is saying that he doesn't have any standing. But yet, they can't come up here and ask for little Benjamin, little Franklin to go back down. But you know something? You see, if we the people, make a pull on my glasses here. You see, if we the people, we, the Jamaican people, do not stand up. Then dog niam we supper. <laughs> you see how far they are? They refuse to table the Integrity Commission report. Why? Why? We sit down and we don't ask questions. We sit down and we don't vote for policies. We vote for party and the likes of a bro God and the likes of a master this and a master that. Yet we don't, we don't vote for infrastructure. We don't vote for the bettering of our country. Huh? We don't do those things. Good afternoon. Welcome to Make We Talk. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. One, one question I'd like to ask you. Yes, sir. The Attorney General mm -hmm. have to keep what he said to her a secret? Well, <laughs> that's a very good question. I don't think so. But the, the fact of the matter is, if she see the advice of the Attorney General regarding a national matter, mm. it is her sole duty to come back and tell the Parliament what happened. Yeah, yeah I know that you well in soft to do it, but Oh, so much secrecy because why the, I think the, what the Attorney General said should be public. It's you can't just advise somebody in secret. No, um, babe, that, babe, no eh? hold on, hold on, hold on. When the former speaker was there, Marissa mm. Dan Philibert, or whatever her name is, I can't pronounce mm. her name anyway, the, 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 somebody in the party, it was opposition spokesperson, finance, Julian Robinson. Ask a question in the parliament. Why is it they can't table the Integrity Commission report? Based on the nature of the Integrity Commission report, the then speaker, Mrs. Marissa Dahl Philibert, said mm. to the parliament that she's going to ask the advice of Jamaica's chief attorney general, the chief right. lawyer, the attorney general. Mm. In, the, in, in the same breath, the lady speaker, Mrs. Marissa, had us to resign from the Parliament of Jamaica mm -hmm. because of certain things. The deputy speaker, who is now the speaker, the wife of the prime minister, Mrs. Yeah. Juliet Holness, went and seek the advice of the attorney general. Mm. Now, he gave her the advice. 
And she's come to tell the people of Jamaica and the parliament of Jamaica that she can't say nothing. Right, right. I, I don't understand what's going on. It's coming like a kangaroo parliament and kangaroo everything. Well, you're a Jamaican, sir. You're a Jamaican. Yes. And are, are, are we going to sit down? Anyway, Jeffrey, behave yourself. Man, not charge you. You can't charge me nothing, man. You're speaking the truth. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand what's going on. It's like a secrecy and secrecy. Everybody. And you, 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 you know what hurts, sir? And I may mm. throw some cons up here, you know, but so be it. You know what hurts, sir? Yes. Is that the members of the Jamaican diaspora in Canada, England, and the United States? Canada mm. Pong! They're not doing nothing, man. They just, I don't know what they're doing. They just hold their position. <laughs> Forget all of all this and all of national this and all of that. I don't, I, this, this don't come in like it's a, the whole thing is for the Jamaican. Everything is just like, it's just like a mafia, a group of mafia business going on. Mm. Yeah, it's so, you know, it, everything not, not sound right to me at all, man. It, not, not sound right to me what's going on. Well, sir, we the mm. people must stand up, you know. The people must people... stand up, man. We the people must speak yeah. out and we're not speaking out. Some of they us are just silent because, because if, if you speak out against certain things, they say that you're a comrade. And if you speak out no, against man. the Labour Party, they say you're a comrade. If you speak out against the JLP or the whatever, they say, they say you're a Labour right. Yeah, but right is right. So the younger people who think like that, they are blind. You know, they are blind and blind can lead blind. You know, you, you, you know something, sir? Mm. When you sit down and you listen to what is going on in the parliament, sometimes you wonder if the parliament is, if some, if, if it's adults sitting in the parliament or it's children. The way how yeah. the speaker speaks, to other members of the parliament, especially the opposition, as if they're children. Yeah, but some of them act like children too, well, because they children, don't they? stand up strong. They're not strong, they're weak. You, you, you can't let people, one, one group of people just manangle the situation like that, like they are God. Well, maybe, as, maybe they're mm, demigods. A guinea gog then, you call them guinea gog. Hmm. But one I thing know I know, that. you know, sir, mm. that if we continue like this in this country, then where would we see our country in twenty in twenty thirty? They, have, they, know, they, they, they said they have a twenty thirty vision to live, work, and raise family. When the yeah. level of nepotism, the level of cronyism, the level of corruption, stinker than Riverton dump. Yeah, it's going on, it, and it, it, it's such a widespread thing, and that's the problem. So we, the people, you know? must know what we want. Some of them don't know what they want, man. From 1932 until now, our nation has been bobbing and weaving and bobbing and weaving. Jamaica's oh, national debt stands at $2 trillion. Yeah. And we spend billions of dollars to service our national debt. When there is 2.3 billion US dollars went down to Jamaica's donor funds and loans, one third of a trillion Jamaican dollars, and where disappear to? They share it up among themselves, man, because that's the only thing I can say. It, 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 it hurt me to know that you have a group of black people who's doing their own black people like that. You know, mm. so where are the black people going to reach now <laughs> if your own black people can't trust them? You know, and it's a disaster, man, to know that you can't trust your own black who you select and vote for to help the country and have the country at heart. 
You know, it, 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 it sounds so bad, man. You know, you know. Look at this. Let me say something to you. I hear the Prime Minister on his on, on his on his um return to the island said that um he got a, a um a security briefing on the tarmac of Norman Man in the National Airport. That they have gotten a suspect in the triple murder in St. James. Mm. So the question must be asked, what about the other four people who murdered one time and three other people who murdered in Trelawney? Prime Minister Holness, what about those people, sir? That's what I'm thinking. Oh, you're talk, you're talking about one murder. Like, that is just one murder happening in two years. What happened to all the rest of the murder happening in between and before? Ah, no, 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 no. Because every day you have the murder. Yes, there is... So the, you gonna, hmm? Yes, there is crime and violence all over the place. I agree. But you promised the Jamaican people both in the diaspora and in Jamaica that you will make Jamaicans when they come home and who live in Jamaica see with the windows and door open. And I yes, know they can't sir. do it. You are the one who, in your, in your campaign speech, Prime Minister Holness, promised the people of the Jamaican diaspora and the Jamaican people who live at home that you will allow them to see with the windows and door open. Yeah. Can they, they do can't that? <laughs> no, they, they can't sleep with their door closed. Because <laughs> they have to listen. Only the people, <laughs> only, only the people of Upper St. Andrew and the people of the Vumba and the Vumba V. Yes. Can sleep with the windows and the open, sir. Yeah, but at Beverly Hills, Beverly Hills. Mm. Those are the people on the hills there. Mm. But the people down there, I mean, God have mercy. It's a disaster, man. It's a disaster. When last so you know have what beautiful country. When last have you went back home, sir? I was there in August. Mm. Mm. Hold on there for me. Well, next call coming in. Yeah. Good afternoon, caller. Welcome to Make We Call. Make We Talk. Good afternoon. My question is this, Mr. Jessica Barry. Mm. All of these politicians, politicians come on and campaign and say they're doing this and doing that and don't do nothing, including the ones them over here. Them come out and them campaign, and as they get into power, nothing has changed. One thing I have to say, though, mm. all, all who coming out and making complaints about the either party not doing properly, the moment them themselves go into power, them do the same thing. No better barrel, no death. That is mm. just my few words to say. Thank you. <laughs> I agree with her. No better barrel, no better hearing. You call Mr. Brown. No better bar, no better hearing, sir? No. And and, and that, that sounds like a true Jamaican. No better barrel, no better hearing. Mm -hmm. Lord of mercy, if I stretch my hand to thee, where would I go, O oh God? Though withdraw thy hand from Jamaica, dear God. My God Almighty, help us. Yeah. Mm? You ever hear about the goose and the gander? Talk to us about that, sir. One of the one of the parties is the goose and the other one is the gander. My God. So you leave from the goose and then you go over to the gander and you just keep going on like that on and on. Mm. Yeah. That's what's happening. I don't know how these people can be so wicked treating them own people like that. And sad see the people them suffering, 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 and you still Doing it on and on and you don't have no conscience to say, well, you know, this is not right. You know, I have a conversation the other day with somebody and they said to me that um, the way how we are painting Jamaica in the wrong light, that's not how it is. Jamaica is, is okay. And I mm -hmm. turned and I said to the individual, I said, may I ask you a question? Have you ever sit down and ask the question when you're going to vote? What happened why we don't have a proper health care system in our country? And why is it that the police officers who put themselves in arms way don't have body cameras, yet they get billions of dollars from the United States and other countries to fight crime? 
Yeah. Yeah, Jamaica crime situation is spiraling out of control. Hold on, let me have a call coming in. Good afternoon. Welcome to Make We Talk. Good afternoon, Mr. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, Jeffrey. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. And I know, and I know, and I know the other voice on the other side. Mm -hmm. But why do the Eden rage and the people imagine being kings? False kings of the earth shall set themselves rulers to take counsel against the Lord and his anointed saints. Say, come, let us break their bonds of thunder and cast away the cards from us. The only that slip in his heaven shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in his region. He's going to spite them with the rod of fire and, and dash them into pieces like part of vessel. It's only time. Mm. It's only time. Nothing breaks the power. Because prayers, there's no distance in prayers. So we're going to just wait and see. Because everything in the dark is going to come to light, you know. Mm -hmm. Whether they are in office or they are out of office. You know, some people got to live in a bulb and don't want the bulb to be blown. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You know something. Thank you, program. Thank you very much, sir. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to the Mech We Talk Jeffrey Tavares YouTube channel. We're gonna on, we're gonna be on there tonight. We're gonna speak about the body cameras for the police officers with former retired FBI agent Wilfred Radigan, um, Herb Nelson Jr., um, uh, Mr. Michael Williams, form uh, chairman of the National Democratic Movement. We're gonna be on. The Mech We Talk Jeffrey Tavares YouTube channel at 7 p.m. this evening to speak some more on the body cameras for the JCF. Why don't I have it yet? What's going on? Mm. Yes. Yeah. My, 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 my caller, yeah. when you look at the healthcare sector in our country, what do you think about that? That's a shame, man. That is a shame. I go to undeveloped countries before, and they undeveloped, and their health system is a lot better than our own. And mm -hmm. Jamaica is one of the one of the best island earlier in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. It is still and the I, 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 island. I, I, hold on for me. I, I think our country is still the gem of the Caribbean. You know. I think yeah. I think other Caribbean leaders look up to Jamaica for advice and so forth and where Jamaica goes. As, as what former Ambassador Luma Samba said in a program that I was listening to, that when she was ambassador to London and there were going to be a critical vote somewhere pertaining to, like said, let's say the banana industry or whatever. By example. Banana Republic. No, 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 no. The banana industry oh. not banana. Let, 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 let's say just say that or the sugar mm. let's say that uh, sugar. other mm. countries will come and ask where Jamaica stand on it and nowadays I think as what former ambassador Curtis Ward said that Jamaica foreign policy gone through the door it is you know it so I, I I think I think at one point we're we're the gem of the Caribbean, and in my opinion, I think we're still the gem of the Caribbean. I think what we need to do as Jamaicans is to just sit down and really do something to assist our country. As I said before, yeah. as I said before, before we go off air, as I said before, mm -hmm. that the members of the Jamaican diaspora must come together, sit down, and formulate a crime plan for Jamaica. They and present to. it to them. And if they don't want it, then we, we go to the United Nations and the American government and say, listen to me. We do all of this. And the people in the high of society don't want it. What can you do to help? Are we going to are, are we gonna sit down and allow Jamaica to run behind another country's back door? PP, clock, clock, pong, 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 pong. Well, then... The people in authority so should seek help from the um, United States and other countries concerning the operation of the Jamaican government. But we remember the government said that they know who they, who they, they, know, they know the gangs and criminals, you know. So if they know they the gangs know. and so if they, so if they know it, how so is that they can't solve the crime problem in our country? Because politicians 
protect them, you know, because a polit- politician can call a, a station and say, such and such a man, give this man, you know, let this man out. And I'll, I'll let that been going on a long time, but now it's worse. Mm. You understand? And some of the police are afraid to do certain things because of politicians. Mm. Because I saw it go. Mm-hmm. And you know, a policeman was up here the other day, and he, he, he told me that he, his, fame, his salary is $100,000 per month. Yes, man. 500 US dollars. Yeah. Shame and disgrace. You know? It is a shame and disgrace. And, when, and, yet, and he, yet, yet their salary gone to 100 and something percent. Right. Anyway. So now, a policeman getting that per month now. Mm. And we don't have enough the, time. Uh, we don't have enough time. Hurry up. Yes. Yeah. Hurry up. Rent out there is so expensive. And if a policeman have a family and you will make that per month, who, who can you pay rent and buy food? And, mm. and thinking about getting a car, you know? As a policeman. Well, I don't know, you know my friend. Whatever well, that's a pray for the nation, as what one of the callers said. Thank you for calling yeah. in. All right, Jeffrey. All right. Thank All right. you. Um, Remember to right. join me this evening at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Jamaica, 7 p.m. U.S. time. On the right. Make We right. Talk Jeffrey Tavares YouTube channel, we'll be speaking about why is it that the JCF police officers don't have any body cameras? Join me then. You're listening to WZOP 92.7. LP 